pleased to meet. This is Sarah Shu, and today I am very pleased to meet with Rusty Bradshaw. The West Valley Talking News, no, we're not the West Valley, we're the Valley Talking News. The Valley Talking News and KRUV Radio Sun enjoy bringing people into your home by means of our audio connection, especially this program. Rusty, welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, I asked you a minute ago how I should uh, introduce you. You tell me how to introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to be someday a best-selling author. All right, I'm impressed. <laughs> I know that you have written at least four books because we have done audio for four books, the latest of which was The Battle for Stephanie. Um, I, I'm going to uh, uh, ask you to tell us about each one of those books. Would you do that? Sure. Uh, the first book that I published in 2018 was called The Rehabilitation of Miss Little. It's about a young woman who's been teased and and bullied for most of her life and she decides to get away from it she's going to go to college in another state well it doesn't quite work out and she still gets bullied and teased but she happens to draw the attention of a young man who kind of takes her under his wing and uh, helps build her self-esteem and her confidence back um, there are some twists and turns that involves him with some legal issues and she and some newfound friends help him find resolution to those issues. <clears throat> the second book, which was published in 2019 is called Moist on the Mountain. And I get a kick out of that because <laughs> there's this thing out there that women don't like the word moist, but I've had a lot of women buy the book. So <laughs> there you go. Who knew? <laughs> it's a um, story about three high school graduates, three boys, who are going to be going their separate ways, and they want to spend one last camping trip together. And they discover across the lake from their campsite a, a camp that is uh, run by a couple who uh, brings in troubled teens. And they find that there are mostly girls at this camp and teenage hormones run amok. So there is a little uh, danger at the end that they work through. Uh, so it kind of is a little more than teenage rollicking. Uh, the third book, uh, which my wife says is the best book, is called Gorge Justice. And it's about a woman who, a young woman in high school who has experienced some trauma. And the family moves away to the Columbia Gorge between Oregon and Washington. Um, they find that the trouble followed them. And she is, suffers through some more trauma at the hands of uh, the same guy who did it to her previously, and she is seriously injured. She recovers, um, and the uh, man who did this to her, they get a different kind of justice. The legal system fails her, but there's a different kind of justice. The last book, uh, oh, and uh, um, Gorge Justice was published in 2021. And um, the last book is called Battle for Stephanie. And it was published earlier this year. And it's about a family who suddenly is thrown into turmoil because the mother takes off with the daughter, Stephanie. And it turns out that it's a struggle with the in-laws wanting to 
have the child to themselves. Well, another family member on the father's side intervenes, takes Stephanie from her school, and then they mount a search and rescue attempt. And the in-laws also mount their own rescue attempt with some mercenaries, and there ends up being a gun battle to get Stephanie back. I have uh, directed for audio all four of those books. Um, the, the most recent, The Battle for Stephanie, and I think I liked that one the best. Um, that was uh, a little more sit on the edge of your seat, I think, maybe, than, than even Gorge Justice. But um, good for you. You're doing what you enjoy. I'm, I'm thrilled to death that you can say that. Um, tell me, when, when did you start writing? Oh, I started writing in, in junior high school. Uh, in fact, three of those first four books were started when I was in high school. <laughs> um, Gorge Justice started right after I graduated from high school as kind of a different kind of story. And then life happened and all, all of those stories and some others sat in a box for 30 some odd years until I got back to them. And each of them, I've, with 30 years of, of life behind me and, and experience, I ramped them up a little bit and, and changed them. They were, uh, in the beginning, they were a little kind of basic and, and, and things like that as you might imagine from an 18 year old, 16 to 18 year old getting started. Um, but this last one, I'm sorry, uh, Battle for Stephanie, I drew kind of from my own life experiences for that one. You what? Tell me, you you've been a mercenary in your part time? <laughs> no, no, not, no, not not that not, part. Not that part. Okay. Um, and not and not the grandpa who 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 got no. uh, got crazy. No, okay. all right. But it it kind of relates to portions of my own life that I I kind of don't want to get into. Yeah. Um, well, they say you're supposed to write about what you know. And so since you lived through some of that, then maybe that helped it to ring true. It, I think in that respect, it's true. Um, but the rest of the story, you know, the rest, the search and rescue part, uh, I'm kind of really proud of that because of the imagery that I brought to it. Mm -hmm. And I drew on my own background having grown up in the mountains of Wyoming to set the stage for that environment. Okay. Um, tell us about the training and experience you've had um, to date. For novel writing, <laughs> I've just kind of done it. Okay. Uh, there's been no real training. Uh, I took a creative writing class in, in college in LeGrand and and <laughs> Funny, the professor, when I wanted to drop the class because I didn't get along with her, she says, well, you'll never be a writer. Oh, well. Well, here I am. Well, I'll show you. Well, the same professor started something called the writing proficiency exam at that college. And it was a, a test that hardly ever anyone passed on the first try. I did. Yeah, there you go. And I wanted to take, and she scored every single one of those tests with two other professors. And and the other professors were different for different readers. I wanted to take those scores and just put them under her nose and say, see, I don't know if I'm the first one that ever passed it the first try, but I'm one of at least. Um, what, are you, what are you doing now? I, I know that until recently you had been uh, working really hard for independent news media. Now, now you're... You're writing. Have you have you got something underway that you want to tell us about? I do. Good. Um, Good. Let's first, hear it. first, I'll tell you about some of the other things I'm doing. Okay. Of course, there are home projects to do. Um, we we installed some artificial grass. Well, 
we had it installed. We we changed our our gate and you know a couple other things. My wife had me put up some some butterfly lights and now I've got a painting project ahead of me. I've also continued my uh, YouTube videos on the Viewpoint Lake project. In fact, I just shot one uh, a couple hours ago. Um, I've also was asked by Hugh Duncan to be part of the Sun City Community Assistance Network board, and I accepted. Good, good for um, you. Next week will be my first board meeting. And uh, I have been working since about March or April on my fifth book. And I am into chapter 20. This book is going to be called Death in Hazard. Death in Hazard, okay. The inspiration for it came from the song Hazard by Richard Marks. Uh, every time my wife played that song on her CDs, I thought, there's a story in there. And so I did it while I'm doing it. Uh, hopefully I can get that completed and go through my rounds of editing in time to get it to the publisher early next year. Okay. Well, I hope you'll give us the opportunity to turn that into audio. Certainly. Because our listeners, as you know, have some vision impairment or another, at least most of them do, those who receive our cartridges. And so to have something that they can listen to opens a world for them. So, right. And I happen to be a big audiobook fan. So. And I have not gone to the point of turning those into audiobooks as yet. Um, I appreciate what you've done in recording them. Um, I'm just not sure how to go about that, especially on my reduced budget now. Um, we can talk about that later because it doesn't have to be an expensive proposition. It's just a matter of uploading files. You just have to figure out whether you're going the Amazon route or find away voices. And um, it's a little bit of trial and error as far as getting those files uploaded, but you can do it. You're a grown up. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so your next novel, um, uh, you expect to have published in early 2024. What advice do you have <clears throat> for aspiring writers? My first piece of advice would be just write. You know, I, I see on, I, I'm connected on Facebook to a couple of writers groups and a, and a lot of times I'll see people put up a question, you know, um, how do I know my first draft is any good? Well, first drafts are never any good. You just need to write it and then work on it. Um, don't be afraid of, of how others might look at it. Um, you just need to work at it. Who edits your stuff? I do. Okay, so you don't have any outside editors. Do you, you don't have friends who take a look and say, how about if you do <clears throat> X, Y, Z? Well, my wife reads them and offers her advice. She's not a, a real big reader. So most of, of what she offers are little minor things. Um, she'll pick up some punctuation, but I go through it three, sometimes four times. And it doesn't matter how many times I go through it. And I've also found that it doesn't matter how many times you have a professional, somebody else go through it, things are going to slip through the cracks. Sure. I have read all my life, and I haven't read a book yet that there aren't errors. Do you um, have a certain number of hours a day that you target for for writing projects? Well, not really. It's kind of a... You know, when I'm ready. How do you know when you're ready? I do my books in, as you know, in sections. And, and they'll be, those sections will be separated in paragraphs by a space. And I'll, I'll write a section. And if I'm at the point where I'm ending that section and I'm not ready to move on, I'll stop, think about it while I'm doing other things. And then go back 
maybe the next day, a couple days later, work on the next section. Okay. Sometimes I'll go two sections. It just depends on what's flowing out. So if you don't have a, a schedule for every day, at least you have a schedule for every week that you're looking to get a certain number of pages or sections completed during right. a given time frame. My, my goal is to do at least an hour of writing a day. Sometimes I don't hit that. Sometimes I'm over it. Okay. So it's probably about an average of an hour a day. Um, what, uh, besides, besides your new responsibility with the board and your writing responsibilities, what else is keeping you out of trouble? <laughs> out of trouble? I don't know if I can say I'm out of trouble, but um, I, I still have a lot of friends and connections in Sun City. So I'm I'm up here at least once or twice a week. You know, early this morning I was at the posse meeting just to, to be there. And they happened to be giving some, getting some uh, certificates and stuff from, from dignitaries. So I videotaped that for my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if there's much of anything else that draws me up here, um, but I like to to come back and see people from time to time. Okay. Uh, do you and your wife, do you enjoy traveling? My wife is not a big road trip person. I am. Uh -huh. So it, <laughs> it's kind of whenever I can get her in the mood. Okay. Um, last year, we, in the spring, we went on the um, western portion of Route 66. Oh, fun. And then in October... We went on the eastern portion. Oh, I'm sorry. In October of last year, we went on the western portion. And this spring, we went on the eastern portion. Mm -hmm. Time is now fluid for me. I, sometimes I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, well, join the club. As you get older, you'll, you'll <laughs> see that more and more often. What didn't I ask you that I should have? I, well, now's your chance. Just picture a huge listening audience out there with bated breath waiting for whatever you have to say. What do you want to say? Well, I do want to say that, that I very much enjoyed my time working full time in Sun City. The people were very friendly and very cooperative. Um, it was just an honor to be able to cover this community. That's great. That's great. That makes me, that pleases me. I know that you have not just met, but you've influenced a lot of people over a long period of time. And it's something to be really proud of. Well, thank you. Um, I, I also wanted to say that my wife and I spend one night a week in Sun City at Men's Club Bingo. <laughs> Do you know uh, my friend Mike Wilbur? Um, He's one of the Men's Club guys. Which one is Mike? Um, also known as Jim Wilbur. He has an I've alias. I have probably seen him. Yeah. I don't know all their names. Okay. Uh, uh, Mike is married. Mike Jim um, is married to Paige Wilbur, who is one of our senior uh, volunteers here at the recording studio. Uh -oh, so okay. we've been friends for a long time. John, what else should I have asked? Anything you can think of? Writer's block. Oh yes, but it's it doesn't last too long. Uh, it's like I was saying, if I'm done with a section and I'm not sure where to go, I have a faint idea, but the trick for me. And it's, and it's especially true with this book. I know how I want it to end. And now I'm just trying to find the right way to get there. So there are times when I want to go forward, but I'm not quite sure exactly how to proceed to the next section or what the next section should, should be. But I find that if I just walk away from the laptop for a while, watch something on TV, 
watch a football game, something. And while I'm doing that, stuff will come to me. Never. No, nothing on paper. It's, it's all up here in my head. And I think that's why I don't want to put anything on paper, because if I do that, then my mind is going to say, you have to do that. But if I keep it in my head, so you have then more it's freedom. more it's more flexible yeah. and I can go off on another branch if I want to and then come back or completely go off on another tangent. And I find that to be true sometimes because uh, while I'm thinking about the next section, I'll have a pretty good idea what I want to do. But when I sit down at that laptop and start typing, it's a little different than what I had planned out in my head. Okay. Uh, today, once again, we've done it. We have brought you as a guest with your story. And uh, you have been pleased to meet Rusty Bradshaw, and we've been pleased to meet too. We certainly thank you for being here and sharing the conversation. Now, if you have any personal comments to add about today's expressed thoughts, opinions, or story, let us let's let us hear from you. Call us at 623-933-0985 or email at rrrbsctly at fastq.com. Again, 623-933-0985, R-R-R-B-S-C-T-Y at F-A-S-T-Q dot com. You may hear those comments in a future segment of Pleased to Meet on the Valley Talking News or on KRUV Radio Sun. Pleased to Meet is also available in our podcast on our website, readingfortheblind.org. You've been listening to Sarah Shu and Rusty Bradshaw, our director, John Schumacher. Okay.